Hey everyone, K with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with a little bit of info on bookworms. So bookworms, as you guys probably know, they aren't just readers. Like, people that read a lot of books, those aren't the only kind of bookworms out there. For me, I, I always knew that bookworms were a real critter or thing, but I wasn't entirely sure what they looked like, what they did, that sort of stuff, uh, up until I did the research for it. I always thought that the holes that I saw in some of these books, someone just like took a power drill and drilled a hole in these things. Uh, of course, I found out that's not necessarily the case, and I wanted to show you guys two different books that I have that have some bookworm damage. Uh, neither book has really severe uh, bookworm damage. Uh, one of them you can barely tell, uh, but there is bookworm damage in these books. This is something that you should look for when you are buying books. Uh, personally, I don't find that it damages the value of books too much. Yes, it does damage the book. The book is obviously not in perfect condition once it has bookworm damage, but uh, it isn't the end of the day because a lot of the times the bookworm damage, from my experience at least, doesn't completely ruin the book. I have seen photos of bookworm damage that goes throughout the entire book and the book is just toast. I mean, it looks like an ant colony was inside of it, but for me, from my experience, I've sold thousands and thousands of books, tens of thousands of books, and I have had three books that have uh, bookworm damage in them. So for me, as I said, I find it is a little bit rare. I mean, we're talking like less than a tenth of a percent most likely. So with that said, I just wanted to show you guys uh, these two books. So this first book is a book on Lincoln from 1865. And then we have, uh, sorry, then we have Uncle Tom's Cabin from uh, 1885. So as you can tell, these are two old books. From my experience on top of uh, the other stuff that I shared about bookworms, from my experience, uh, the books that I normally find that have bookworm damage are generally older books like these, ones from the 1800s. Uh, of course, as I said, I've only had three of these books happen, but for all three of them to be from the 1800s, that sort of makes me think that there might be something that happened back then to make the paper inside the books more delicious to book bugs or something. I don't know. But uh, with that said, first book, we have a tiny, tiny divot right here on the front cover. So I have not actually seen bookworm damage go through leather, not even in photos, because I did pull up photos to look at all this stuff because as I said, I don't encounter it very often. So this tiny, tiny hole, I am 99.9% .9 sure is bookworm damage. You could sort of tell it's bookworm damage when it's sort of like rounded holes. Like this obviously is not a tear. This isn't someone dropped something on it. It clearly looks like something came in and chewed away this little section of, this, uh, of the uh, cover. When you guys have bookworm damage, generally the holes that you have will be very smooth. There's going to be a round end on one end, and uh, it's going to be not too, dick, uh, not too thick. Sorry. And um, here's a... Point, uh, seven lead pencil, uh, mechanical pencil. So see about how thick the black part where the lead comes out is. So I find that the holes are generally about that size or potentially a little bit bigger. I don't have anything on me to show you guys for about how big it does get, but uh, in the next photo you guys will see roughly how big the biggest one I've seen is. Uh, of course there are ones that are a little bit bigger than this for uh, how thick they are, but oftentimes they are not very thick at all. So with that said, this little hole here, it's not very, uh, big, but it definitely is bookworm damage from what I can see. So next book, again, that's Uncle Tom's Cabin, 1885. We got all the book. Uh, as you guys can see, the pages on this are pretty yellowed. That's something else that I see with books that have some bookworm damage. Generally, the pages are more yellowed. Uh, obviously, that has something to do with the fact that these books generally are from the 1800s, from my experience. But uh, in addition to that, I just, that seems to be a common factor is these books have yellowed pages. So maybe that's uh, how it sort of happens is the whole factor of, well, these pages were made a certain way, so that's why the bugs like it more. I don't entirely know. But uh, with that said, I'm just going to show you guys a shot of, let me blow it out, of the little bookworm, oh, sorry, little bookworm hole. So as you guys can see, it's right there and it goes through here. I'm going to show you guys another shot. That's what it looks like from the outside. So from my experience as well and what I've seen in photos, generally the bookworm damage is going to be more on the bottom of the book or sometimes on the top. Basically, it's because the thing that made the hole, uh, it's usually a larva. So like a bug is going to lay a egg on your book and then the egg is going to grow and eat your book and uh, eventually spawn and crawl away. But uh, generally what I find is it's going to be on the top or the bottom in photos and from my own experience. And that's because it's a lot easier for a bug to just do that or that as opposed to like get on it, crawl in and do it somewhere over here. So that's just what I've seen. Um, once again, I'm just going to show you guys some uh, the damage. Um, 
as you can see, it is rounded hole, goes uh, basically through the book, goes all the way out. I doubt you guys could see all the way out, but um, I could see I could see through it. It's sort of weird. I mean, it's weird to think that there is a not just one kind of bug, but a lot of kinds of bugs out there that eat books, but it's sad and it's a thing. And uh, if you guys aren't sure exactly what bookworms are, I'm going to have other videos. I will, if you guys want to learn more about it, I, you can subscribe right down there. I am going to do a playlist, so at the end of the video, you, you can check out the playlist right there, most likely, because there's a lot of info on book, bookworms that I want to share with you guys. Of course, this is the first video on bookworms, so there's not going to be a lot in the playlist. There's going to be one video, but later in the future, there are going to be more uh, videos on that, so check out that playlist. But uh, as I was saying, bookworms, they're not just one kind of worm. They're not just one kind of bug. Uh, generally, they aren't even worms. As I said earlier, they are a kind of larva most of the time. The larva is laid in the book, it grows, it eats the book, and then it leaves. That is usually what happens. Of course, when you have the bookworm uh, damaged books that the holes go all the way through and it looks like an ant colony, obviously those things stayed a little bit longer than that. But uh, that is something that you will often see. As such, uh, the damage oftentimes isn't too severe because they usually come, they eat, they leave, if we're doing a bug li Bugs Life reference. But uh, generally, the damage isn't terrible. It is obviously a eyesore. Uh, readers that have read a lot of books and seen bookworm damage before, they can auto automatically uh, recognize it. They'll be like, oh, this book has bookworm damage. Uh, but most people, they won't really be able to put together what it is because, as I said in the very beginning of this, most people don't really know what bookworms are. I personally didn't, and I've been selling books for a few years, and I actually sold books for a few years before I figured it out that bookworms were, in fact, a thing. I thought it was always just people that liked books, and it's like, oh, nope, they were actually named after a real well, not real worm, but you know uh, how larva is called a worm because technically accurate stuff isn't a thing anymore. I don't know. But uh, it's just a really interesting concept for you guys to think about. Of course, I wish I had more stuff to show you guys that had bookworm damage so, so I could like be more accurate on showing you guys all the things that you can look out for. But uh, oftentimes, I don't find the books. As I said earlier, I've only come across three books. Oftentimes, though, what I see in photos and from my own experience, it's just one little hole drilled through. I've never seen it on the cover up until this Abraham Lincoln book. So bookworm damage is, from my experience, as I said, very rare, but it is something that you should watch out for. It is something that can negatively impact the book. But oftentimes, something else, though, when I find books that have bookworm damage, like this one and this one, oftentimes those books have seen a lot of neglect or are at least very damaged besides that. So this book here, um, just to show you guys, so Uncle Tom's Cabin, has a boatload and a half of writing in it. It has some pages that have some tears on it and um, writing and some staining. It's, this book obviously has been read a few times and probably read by a few eight-year-olds who didn't really value the book. Uh, on the other hand, we have this Abraham Lincoln book. As you guys can see, it's got a severe stain. It had a lot of water damage on it. Um, its pages are warped. It has some pages loose. I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's been around for a little while. It's been abused. And uh, that's something that I normally find with books that I have had that have bookworm damage, ones that I've seen photos of. I have seen quite a few that are neglected like these, but generally the ones I see the photos of are of nicer books as well. So having a neglected, abused book is not a guarantee that it's going to have bookworm damage, uh, obviously, because you guys know how many abused books I've had, but it is a good indicator if it has bookworm damage and a bunch of abuse. That's a good indicator of, well, no one really took care of this book. That's how it happened. So if you guys want your books to avoid having bookworm damage, I'm going to do a video on that. Uh, again, you can check that out in the playlist. Uh, I will do that in the near future. And bookworm damage, though, it's pretty easy to avoid. All you have to do is make sure that your books are safe. Make sure they don't get wet. Uh, bugs, they like high humidity. So if you guys could get a dehumidifier for your antique book business, that could be a really nice thing. Uh, dehumidifiers, they basically take moisture out of air. And if you can get enough moisture out of the air, it can actually help your books uh, last longer because uh, too much moisture can cause foxing, molding, all that sort of mildew damage to your books. In addition to that, it can get the pages on your books a little bit uh, wavy if it gets humid enough. Uh, uh, oftentimes it doesn't get that humid, but that is potentially a risk. Uh, but with bugs, if you can get the humidity low enough, bugs actually like can't live. They uh, Some bugs get the moisture they need out of the air or stuff like that, so they need the moisture, and if you take it away from them, they won't go into where your books are. So that is something that you guys can do to keep your books a little bit safer. There's a lot of other stuff as well. Again, you can check that out in the video. That will eventually drop, hopefully soon. And 
mentioned, uh, I have a lot of other info, though, all besides that, that I would like to share with you guys on bookworms, because bookworms, they are, I'm not going to say number one threat to books, because as I said, I don't have that damage very often, but they are definitely a threat to books, and if you guys sell antique books like me, and any bit of damage to these books can really impact their value. Of course, there are a lot of books that are so rare that the, rare that the damage doesn't uh, totally negate the value. I actually have a really cool book that I'll be sharing with you guys soon enough, but uh, there's a lot of books out there that have a lot of interesting stuff to them, and to see them get eaten away by evil bookworm bugs that just like pooping in your book, uh, that's not very fun. So with all that said and done, though, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out one of the other videos. As I said, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.